All right, one of the biggest questions I get at my repair shop, D. Martino Motorsports, is I'm looking for a used car for my kid that's graduating or going to college or I'm just looking for an extra car, but I'm looking for something used and not too, too expensive. So, um, you know, I, I always give them the best advice I can and I tell them what cars to buy and what cars to avoid. So my recommendation for anybody, you know, it's always like, yeah, I want to spend five grand. It's tough to find a car for five grand that you're going to put on the road. And I don't know about where you live, but New York State inspection, it's not, I mean, it's, it's strict enough. It's strict enough where the car has got to be safe and it has to pass admissions. And um, for five grand, if you're going to a normal used car salesman, it's tough. It's tough to find a car like that. Now, I mean, I sell cars. I don't consider myself a used car salesman. I'm a, I'm a mechanic, auto repair technician that sells cars. Um, so I go through my cars top to bottom and I, I definitely select them with a lot of experience. So my recommendation is, you know, especially in a five to $7,000 range, go for a Toyota. I can't even think of one bad one. Go for a Toyota. Consistently, you're gonna find the least amount of money pits when you buy a Toyota. Uh, now, of course, you know, obviously, you have to have a mechanic look at the car. If you're a good mechanic or if you just got a good eye, you could probably YouTube and find out, you know, what to look for on a used car, and I'm sure you can find some things, and, you know, maybe it's something I might even should do a video on. But, um, uh, you know, consistently, you're going to find the best, most reliable cars, the least likely to be a money pit you know, when, you, when you're buying a Toyota. Um, you know, I wouldn't steer clear of too many Hondas. Uh, steer, okay, I'll tell you this. How about this? Steer clear just about any European car there is. It's just, they're, they're expensive to work on. Not a lot of people want to work on them. Electrically, they could be very problematic. Um, I mean, and there's some out there that run forever. And, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of over-engineered in some ways, but as a used car goes, just stay away, especially if you don't want to put money into it. Um, Nissans, stay away from Nissans. Actually, I can't say all Nissans. Um, they're trucks, not not the Frontier, but they're they're Titans. They're 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 not built too bad. I'll tell you what, they're pretty stout. Um, and what's the sport utility version? Uh, Armada. That, that's a good built truck. Um, other than that, steer clear of any, any Nissans. Or maybe a GTR. I wouldn't steer clear of one of them. I'd take one of them. But <laughs> but anyway, yeah. The, uh, and especially anything with a CVT. I mean, that, I feel like they're the car that the brakes last longer than the trannies. Um, you know, and even the non-CVTs, they're just such a problematic car, man. They were so well built in the in the 80s and the 90s when they were Datsuns. Um, they were just, they were indestructible. The Sentras ran forever. And then, you know, by mid-2000s, early 2000s, they went through that. I think Renault bought, bought them. They just went so downhill, man. It's sad. Um, stay away from Subaru. I mean, I don't care what the commercial says. I don't care how much you love, you know, the way they look or whatever it is, stay away. You're looking for a used car you don't want to sink money into. Unless you're buying a 90 Subaru because they used to be built pretty well. Um, it's just issues. Issues. I would, I would literally, I think I would take a 200,000 mile Camry over a 50,000 mile Subaru. I bet you you'd have more problems with that Subaru at 50K than you'd have with that Camry. Um, it's just, it's sad. So stay away from Subarus. Dodge, stay away from Dodge cars, man. I'll tell you what, they just, sad too. They don't build them well anymore. They're horrible. They went through too many mergers between Mercedes, between Chrysler LLC, and now Fiat. Oh my goodness, stay away from a used Dodge. I mean, their trucks are definitely better than their cars. That's probably why they divided it into Ram now since 2010. 
Um, you know, I don't mind the Ram trucks that much, especially if you're getting into the diesels. Um, I mean, the best built diesel there is as far as the, the engine goes. I mean, that Cummins is just leagues above any other diesel out there. Um, but yeah, their cars, they're just so shitty. Um, and like I said, I know people are going to get mad and say, oh, I got a Dodge and it runs forever. You, you may. Some of them, you'll get one, one once in a while um, that runs a long time or you'll have good luck with. But this whole thing is consistency. You know, I know when I go out and I buy a Toyota, the, the likelihood of that being a good car is very, very high. When I go buy one of these other brands, the likelihood is very, very low. So this is what this is what I'm saying. Um, GM, stay away from their cars. Their cars suck. I, I used to love them. They suck. Uh, Equinoxes, horrible. Um, they're just, you know, their trucks way better than their cars. I can't really think of too many cars that GM builds anymore that I could say, yeah, yeah, they're pretty good. No, can't really think of them. Um, Ford, Ford's hit or miss. Uh, we have a fleet company with Escapes, Ford Escapes, and I'll tell you what, man, they they rack some miles up, and they're pretty damn good. And now here's what's funny though. This is, I think, this is the whole consistency thing. This fleet company's probably got about five Ford Escapes, and they're all consistently good. All 200 plus thousand miles on them, and they need repairs here and there, but they're pretty good. But then I have customers that don't even use them in sort of like a fleet service. They're just everyday cars, and these things are horrible. So I don't really know. I mean, you're hit or miss with it with an Escape. I kind of want to say, yeah, I'd say stay away from the EcoBoost Escape. Go for the regular, I think it's a 2.5 liter instead of the 1.6. But um, their cars, though, uh, you know, they're hit or miss. Their focuses, I'd stay away. I don't think I've ever seen a good focus. I've seen a couple fusions out there that, you know, run pretty good. Just just stay away, man. I don't even know why you're looking at this other stuff. Just, just go for a Toyota. Um, you almost think I'm getting paid by Toyota or something, which I'm not. Um, you know what pays me is when I see people happy. That's what pays me. You know, you go out and, I, you know, I recommend a used car. I look it over. It's good. And it runs. I mean, for instance, I bought a used Corolla in 04. Those freaking cars, they just, they run forever. I mean, is this car was such a good car. I sold it to one of my customers with 275000 on it. And this car just, nothing went wrong with this car. I mean, you put brakes on it. You tune it up. You change the oil. You do the regular maintenance and you drive it. I sold this car with 275 to my customer who drove back and forth to Pennsylvania. They drove this car to over 400,000 miles on it. And in that time span, they've done regular maintenance. And I think I put a coil, one coil, and an AC compressor on it. You cannot get a better bang for your buck than something like that um, when you're looking for a used car. You know what I mean? That body style too, I mean, the Corollas before that were awesome too. The only downfall, you know, is a timing belt motor. So if you didn't keep that ma maintained, you know, you can risk blowing the motor. And then to maintain it was a little pricey. So if you go with it, I think it's a, I think it's 03 to 08. That Corolla, if you could find one that's not rotted out, don't be afraid of the miles. I'll tell you that right now. If somebody just even maintained that remotely, don't be afraid of the miles. And just the Toyota, I've been I've been working on cars at my repair shop since 2013. I mean, we're talking nine years. I think I've done two or three maybe Toyota trannies in that time. I've probably done 15 Honda trannies. Um, you know, I mean, it just you just don't see that those kind of issues with Toyotas. They build them really well. Um, you know, I, like I said, uh, I'm trying to think of any other brands to... Now, Hyundai, you know, a lot of people buy Hyundais now. And Hyundai started out in 1986. Not that cold, old, of, old of an automotive industry. Um, and they were horrible. When they first came out, they were horrible. But over the years, they got a lot better. Um, 
they, they did. And I get a lot of customers with, especially the SUVs, Santa Fe's, anything with a V6, they run, man. They run forever. Um, and I would say, dude, don't be afraid of them. Some of their four cylinders, they got some issues with some of their four cylinders. Um, you know, you'll see them with 100K on them, consuming a lot of oil, or you'll see timing chain issues on them, or you'll see them just flat out seize up. Um, so, I mean, Hyundai's weird. You know, I don't have enough data on it to really tell you exactly what models have the issue, but it's it's always the four cylinders. I never see the V6s have issues. Um, so that, that's where I'm at with Hyundais, because they're really popular these days. Uh, I mean, I, and that goes for Kia too, you know, it's a kind of a Hyundai Kia thing. Same thing, I see the same issues. So, um, yeah, used cars, man, that, that's where I'd go with. And I'll tell you what, when you're when you're buying a Toyota too, I really wouldn't be afraid of the hybrid. You got a lot of people that are afraid of the hybrids. Um, their batteries last, man. I mean, I just I just put a battery in. A, I've only put two hybrid batteries in since I've been doing uh, in the auto industry. Um, and they get a little pricey, but there's so many companies out there now that will offer a good warranty or even a lifetime warranty and come right out and swap out your battery for you. You know what I mean? So, I mean, if you can get a, a you know, a, a hybrid, there's really not too many other problems they have. I mean, I did one tranny on a hybrid Camry that had 350,000 on it. And the tranny was, so, I, I bought the tranny, it was like $175 for the tranny at the, at the uh, salvage yard with like 80K on it. And I was like, why is this tranny so cheap? And they're like, we just don't sell them. There's just not too many issues. So, I mean, I really wouldn't be afraid of them. They're very economical, and they're just bulletproof. Toyota's got it down with their hybrid system, with their CVTs. Um, like I said, the only the Toyota I would really say just be careful of is, I want to say it's 07 through 09 Camrys with their 2.4 four-cylinder. Um, some of them had oil consumption issues. Most of them were addressed under warranty. Um, the warranty on them, uh, they rerung them, and they just they ran forever after that. After that, and there is a way to tell. If you go on YouTube, there's a couple guys on there that are pretty smart about this stuff. They'll tell you exactly where to look on these Camrys to see. You can tell if the head was pulled off or not just by I believe it's the gasket, the head gasket. You can you can tell externally. So, um, but they're they're just such a good car, so economical. And you can find them out there. They don't go super cheap. And that's one of the main complaint I get about Toyotas is, ah, they're just expensive. Yeah, they are. They're a little more expensive. But I promise you, you're going to save that money in repairs and headaches and just frustration. Um, and you'll be pleased, man, nine times out of ten. So that's my little public service announcement for all the people looking for used cars. So enjoy, and I hope this helps. If you like this channel and my content, please subscribe. Also, click the bell so you can constantly get notifications of new content. Thank you.